brave men and women gave all so that our flag can fly high and proud. This monument to Virginia's fallen from battles throughout our nation's history is a living tribute to freedom and the sacrifices it requires. Join us as we remember these heroes through a special Memorial Day ceremony. Live on the grounds of the Virginia War Memorial. Now, we welcome a word from the Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Honorable Ralph S. Northam. Hello, I'm Governor Ralph Northam. As Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia and as a veteran, I am honored to pay tribute to the brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice to defend our nation. Today marks the 65th consecutive Memorial Day ceremony held at the Virginia War Memorial. And I especially want to thank the Gold Star family members who are with us. It is important to acknowledge the pain and sacrifice that the families and friends of lost service members endure. Every year, the loved ones of fallen service members are bound together by loss, and part of our duty in honoring them is reaching out to their family and friends. The mission of the Virginia War Memorial is to honor our veterans, preserve our history, educate our youth, and inspire patriotism in all. As evidenced by today's ceremony, the Virginia War Memorial and its partners remain focused on doing just that, we are also committed to paying forward the stories of the heroes enshrined in our memorial to ensure they and their sacrifices are never forgotten. In the past year, the names of four Virginians have been etched in glass and stone on the walls of the Shrine of Memory. They join the names of nearly 12,000 Virginians killed in action from World War II to the present. As we honor the service members who are already enshrined here, we want to recognize those four who were added to our shrine of memory. Army Private First Class Richard Harris of Henrico County, who died from wounds received in action in Korea in 1951. Army Staff Sergeant Ben Maxwell of Appomattox, who was killed in action during the 1983 terrorist bombing of the United States Embassy in Beirut, Lebanon. Marine Corps Staff Sergeant Donald C. May Jr. of Richmond, who was killed in action in Iraq in 2003. And Army Captain Humayun Khan of Bristow, who was killed in action in Iraq in 2004. To the families of Private Harris, Sergeant Maxwell, Sergeant May, and Captain Khan, and to all our Gold Star families, we grieve with you. As a nation, we designate the last Monday of May every year as Memorial Day. But on the hallowed grounds of the Virginia War Memorial, every day is Memorial Day. In every one of our nation's wars, Virginians have been among the first to answer the call. Freedom is never free, and on Memorial Day, we are all reminded of the human cost to protect our freedoms. The Virginia War Memorial is our memorial. It exists because of the support of veteran service organizations, the Virginia General Assembly, the Virginia War Memorial Foundation, its donors and supporters, and civic groups. But most of all, it exists because of you, the people of our great Commonwealth. You know that the cost of freedom are very high and that we all must never forget those who paid that price to defend the blessings of liberty that we hold so dear. So as we pay tribute to our fallen heroes in today's ceremony, I ask that you remember their courage, their devotion, and above all, their sacrifice, and live in gratitude each and every day for the gift they have given us. I ask that you remember the families that they left behind, we know that when brave men and women are needed to defend our freedom, Virginians will always be ready to serve. Thank you.
Good morning. I'm Clay Mountcastle, and I'm the director of the Virginia War Memorial, and I'd like to welcome you to this year's Commonwealth's Memorial Day ceremony. For those of you joining us via live broadcast, we greatly appreciate you tuning in. And for those here in attendance in Hallman Amphitheater this morning, what a great day it is. To see you, to actually see your faces, it, it's amazing. It feels really, really good. Thank you all for being here. The last gathering we held here in the amphitheater was on the 29th of February in 2020, when we dedicated the C. Kenneth Wright Pavilion. It's been too long. I speak for all of us here at the memorial when I say it's been too long. For all of our distinguished guests, we have members of the Virginia legislature with us today, our military veterans, of course. Thank you for taking the time to join us. We are grateful that Commissioner Maxwell and Acting Secretary Jabs could be here to share their thoughts on Memorial Day. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all to the 380th Army Band for joining us today. <laughs> Master Sergeant Obasi, thank you for being here to help out. And a very special welcome to the Gold Star family members that are with us this morning. We greatly appreciate having you here on this ever important day. I've often said that the best way to learn the true meaning of Memorial Day is by getting to know a Gold Star family. They live it every single day. They epitomize strength, resilience, and pride. And they are some of the greatest patriots you will ever meet. Thank you all for being here. So we seem to be emerging from a strange, dark tunnel that has covered us for over a year. As much as many of us would love to celebrate today, really, truly, the urge to celebrate is in the air. We should always remember that Memorial Day should be a somber day of reflection for all the claims of what the American public has or has not had to sacrifice during this pandemic. Today should remind us of the true meaning of sacrifice and the real meaning of freedom. It's so easy to get wrapped up in our own lives, all the sensationalized stuff that we see and hear on a daily basis, and all this threatens to dull our senses and our perspective of what really matters, or what it means to live in a truly free society in the very best nation on earth. So at least for today, let's put the pandemic aside, shall we? Here together, let's revisit what service and sacrifice mean for all of us. And let's be proud, honored, and humbled by that meaning. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the performance of the National Anthem by Master Sergeant Damon Abbasi, the Virginia Air National Guard. Master Sergeant. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight oh the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night 
night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amazing. Thank you. Please be seated. It's never sounded so good. Our War Memorial is a division of the Virginia Department of Veteran Services. The DVS team is a team of dedicated professionals, many of whom have served in uniform themselves, all focused on the important mission of assisting veterans and their families throughout the Commonwealth. Thank you, ma'am. The Commissioner of the Department of Veterans Services, Mr. John Maxwell, has agreed to share some remarks and introduce our keynote speaker. Commissioner Maxwell. Well, thanks, uh, Dr. Moncastle. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Distinguished guests, veterans, and our Gold Star families, it is a great day to be together, both in person and virtually, on this absolutely gorgeous day. I'm sure many of you want to partake in all that Virginia has to offer on this holiday, so thanks for taking time to reflect, to honor, and to remember. First, I'd like to take a moment to thank our Virginia War Memorial and our communications teams for all their work to plan and prepare for this ceremony. Thanks, Clay. And then while they're not here, I'd also like to thank the staff of our three state cemeteries in Suffolk, Amelia, and Dublin, as they're holding ceremonies right now, too, to honor and remember. So my primary job today is to introduce our keynote speaker. But before I do that, I want to highlight why we gather every year on this last Monday of May. As we mark the unofficial start of summer, we must remind ourselves that it takes courage and a higher calling to be willing to lay down your life to defend the freedoms and liberties that we enjoy as citizens of this nation and this commonwealth. Seeing the names of the Virginians etched in stone and glass in the shrine of memory of our Virginia War Memorial provides a lasting visual of the costs of freedom. While that visual jogs our memories when we visit, our Gold Star families face these memories and the tremendous loss and sacrifice represented here every single day. And we owe you more than we can repay for that, uh, for that sacrifice. We ask our service members to support and defend life and liberty ahead of their own safety. And they do that every day knowing that those ideals are foundational to our distinctly American lives. So I often wonder if those who died in defense of our nation and the values we hold so dearly would say that they made the ultimate sacrifice. Wouldn't it be more of a sacrifice to give up the values for which millions of Americans have fought for centuries? I think then Congressman James Garfield understood this concept best when he spoke at Arlington National Cemetery on May 30th, 1868, the first Decoration Day and nationwide remembrance of those who died in defense of the nation. He said, for love of country, they accepted death and thus resolved all doubts and made immortal their patriotism and their virtue. So let's enjoy all the benefits of living in a country where freedom is not only accepted, but revered. Let's just never forget what sacrifices were necessary to get here. It's my distinct honor to introduce our keynote speaker today. The Honorable Kathleen T. Jabs is Virginia's Acting Secretary of Veterans and Defense Affairs, where she works to coordinate state and federal resources to support Virginia's veteran community and liaison with federal defense facilities. She's a U.S. Naval Academy graduate, a retired Navy captain, 
a military spouse, the daughter and granddaughter of veterans, and the mother of an active duty service member. She knows the true meaning of service. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Secretary Jabs. Thank you, Commissioner Maxwell, for that introduction. And thank you to Dr. Moncastle and all the staff, the Department of Veterans Services, and the Virginia War Memorial for your work and effort to make this day a fitting tribute to honor the men and women who died in defense of our country. It is my distinct honor to be with you today as the Acting Secretary for Veterans and Defense Affairs for the Commonwealth of Virginia working for Governor Ralph Northam to serve the military, veterans, and family members in our state. I want to recognize some key members of our audience who are here with us today. Representative Spanberger, Senator Donovan, Senator Hashmi, Senator McClellan, Brigadier General Ring on behalf of the Virginia National Guard, all of our veterans, active duty service members, guardsmen, reservists, and family members present. Most significantly, I want to recognize the Gold Star family members with us today, Staff Sar of Staff Sergeant Ben Maxwell and Army Private First Class Richard Harris. We are here today. <laughs> we are here today to pay tribute to Staff Sergeant Maxwell Private First Class Harris, along with all the other mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, grandparents, all of the heroes who have died defending our country, our way of life, and the freedoms we live every day. I know that defending freedom entails sacrifice and calls upon the highest ideals of honor, courage, and commitment. I'm a Navy veteran, as is my husband. Our son is serving in the Coast Guard. Both of our fathers served in the military. And my grandfather was a veteran of World War II who earned two Purple Hearts. It is a privilege to serve and to give back to our country. And yet, that service entails a risk and requires a willingness to sacrifice. The men and women whose names are etched on the walls in these sacred shrines of memory answered the nation's call. They wanted to protect a country which has given them and all of us so much. Thousands of Americans have fought and died on battlefields here and abroad to defend our freedoms and way of life. Since the Revolutionary War, more than 12,000 Virginians are counted among that number. They all demonstrated in each and every action, a willingness to make the ultimate sacrifice for the cause in which they believed. They were called to be part of something bigger than themselves. They were ordinary people who responded in extraordinary ways in extreme times. They answered when their country called to defend the freedoms we enjoy each and every day. On this Memorial Day, it is our duty to honor those we have lost from the Revolutionary War to the Civil War, to World Wars I and II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, and the many conflicts in between. President Biden announced in April that all U.S. troops will leave Afghanistan in September of this year. With that with <laughs> With this withdrawal comes the conclusion of the nation's longest military campaign in its history. And today among those we honor are the 71 brave Virginians who answered the call of service and paid the ultimate sacrifice for our nation during operations enduring freedom and freedom sentinel in Afghanistan. They are part of the more than 200 Virginians who have died for our country since September 11, 2001. 
the fallen heroes whose names are inscribed on the walls around us came from all walks of life and from every corner of the Commonwealth, from the Eastern Shore to the Southwest, from the Shenandoah Valley to Southside, from Northern Virginia to Hampton Roads. They came from small towns and big cities, from wherever they came, from whatever profession they held in civilian life. Each of these heroes shared several fundamental qualities, pride in themselves, pride in the unit in which they served, and pride in their country. Each displayed a selfless dedication to duty and integrity. Each demonstrated a willingness to make the ultimate sacrifice for the men and women beside them in battle and for the cause in which they believed. We have awarded medals to our service members and added their names to memorials to honor and remember them for their service. But nothing can ever replace the hole left behind by a fallen service member. Their families and friends know too well the grief and sorrow that time does not erase. Gathering together on this day is one way to show our appreciation and gratitude. But we must do more than gather and remember. We must act. We need to ensure that we take care of the families left behind and that we appreciate the service members, families, and veterans who are here among us. Governor Northam is committed to that mission, as is our General Assembly members. Through our Virginia Department of Veteran Services, we work every day to make Virginia the best place in the nation for our veterans, service members, and their families. You, as individuals, can help further this legacy in many ways, by volunteering to help veterans, by assisting a family who is grieving the loss of a service member, by helping the family of an active duty service member who is away, or by visiting those injured in service to our nation. Perhaps the most poignant way we can continue to honor our lost service members is to continue to gather together on this special day every year to pay homage to each of them. And above all, we can honor those we have lost by living up to the ideals they died defending. Today, we honor the fallen and we remember them, all of them, with the love and gratitude of a grateful nation and Commonwealth. Thank you for joining us today for this very special remembrance celebration. May God continue to bless this nation and this Commonwealth with brave men and women like those Virginians we are honoring today. Thank you, Secretary Jabs. In keeping with the War Memorial's focus on education and service, for several years, the Virginia War Memorial Foundation has awarded the Rear Admiral John Meraki Memorial Scholarship to a graduating senior intending to participate in ROTC upon enrollment in college. So for this year, we are proud to announce that the Meraki Scholarship awardee for 2021 is Reed Jones of Abingdon High School. Clap for Reed, all right. Reed will attend Virginia Tech in the fall and plans to contract in Army ROTC. Congratulations, Reed. And now for a second year, the Virginia War Memorial hosted an art contest for Armed Forces Day. Students from around the Commonwealth submitted artwork, some amazing artwork, that was placed on our website's digital online gallery, and the public viewed these masterpieces and voted for a winner in four separate age categories. I will announce the winner in each category right now. In our kindergarten through second grade category, uh, the winner was Grant Bernosch from Grange Hall Elementary in Chesterfield. Grant. His work of art was called Helping Hands. In the third grade to fifth grade category, 
with a piece of work called Grandpa Carver. The winner was Esther Futrell, a fifth grade, for a homeschooled student in Chesterfield. Good job, Esther. All right. In the sixth to eighth grade category, the middle school category, from Tomahawk Creek Middle School here in Chesterfield was War Dog by Gavin Godfrey. And then in our high school category, ninth grade to 12th grade, A True Hero by Anish Aradi, 10th grade from Harrisonburg High School. In Harrisburg, thank you. Great job, Anish. Now, at this time, we're going to take a short, about six minute break in the ceremony so that the official party and some Gold Star family members can move up to this portion of the Shrine of Memory, the newest section of the 20th century section, to prepare for the pl placement of the memorial wreath. For those here in the amphitheater, please allow for the official party and uh, Mike Harris of the Gold Stars to move on up uh, for the placement of the wreath. Um, and then you may adjust uh, if you can. There's so many of us here today, which is a great problem to have. Um, if you want to try and gather up top so you can get a better view, or those of you seated on this side of the amphitheater may simply want to move out to this side of the grass and this side of the hill in order to be able to view it. Just don't want everybody to try and force their way up the steps at one time. Um, also, those watching at home uh, will be able to view a video about the War Memorial that was created by CBS 6. So again, we will go ahead and pause for about six minutes and we will reconvene the ceremony up in the Shrine of Memory for the 20th century. So thank you very much. Okay, my name's Martha Martin, and I've been a volunteer here for about 11 years. This place was important to me because I grew up in a Navy family, and I had two brothers in the Army, and my husband was in the um, Air Force and Air National Guard. So uh, this was a way of two things. One, honoring those people in my family, and also continuing with my life's work, which was teaching history. Our volunteers are truly the heart and soul of the Virginia War Memorial, and our volunteers are in many ways the reason that people come back because they meet these volunteers, uh, almost all of them veterans themselves, and they have their own stories of service. And it's just making that wonderful human connection. Uh, this is a place that you know centers on human connections and human uh, discussion about these issues that um, are central to the Virginia War Memorial and what it means to honor and preserve and inspire and educate. Uh, my name is Wilton Curtis. I've been a volunteer here better than 15 years. I'm former Air Force, have a name of a relative on the wall, and really enjoy the Saturdays that I uh, volunteer here. Uh, there's a lot of names on that wall, a lot of names that provide really the freedoms that we have, and I feel somewhat of an obligation to try to honor those names. Uh, we do not need to forget the sacrifice that they made. In fact, in the Korean War section, there is a name, uh, George W. Jackson, Jr. Uh, he is my Uncle Junior, and he died in Korea on Thanksgiving Day, November 1951. And so I feel a strong obligation to keep his memory alive. Uh, throughout the Virginia War Memorial, you can see a series of exhibits and displays. We have our new Medal of Honor Gallery, which focuses on the 50 different Medals of Honor that are attributed to the Commonwealth of Virginia. Some amazing stories of, of individual courage and bravery, all the way from the uh, Civil War up until the Vietnam War. We have this new Veterans Art Gallery that shows that veterans are capable of many, many things to include creative things. Oftentimes you find out it's not a, uh, a veteran that happens to do art, but an artist that happens to have served in uniform. Right now we have a photo exhibit called An Added Dimension, and this one was a, a little bit different. We receive a, a lot more than just objects. Uh, we receive photos, letters, all kinds of other interesting items that come in. And uh, this was just a, an interesting way to exhibit them. We decided that it would be neat to make them into 3D, to put 3D glasses on, they all come up as uh, three-dimensional. Memorial Day is important for a couple of reasons. Uh, for one, it's to remember those who didn't come home, um, but it's also to remember those who did. So when you think of Memorial Day, you know, you, 
you know, honestly, you think of you know the 12,000 names that are on the wall, but you got to remember that each one of those names represents a family or friends or somebody that somebody knew who did not come home. So it's just as much for them as it is for honoring those who did not come home. My uncle was uh, returned to Richmond uh, in such a way that the, the coffin was not allowed to be opened. We were recommended not to open it. He uh, received a direct hit by an enemy mortar round. He was buried on my 12th birthday. I have very vivid memories of Thanksgiving. My, my grandmother took that to heart because of the day that he was killed. And uh, occasionally I'll relay on a personal basis to try to bring the, the, the wall even more in focus to some visitors. I, I really determine this by just who's visiting. But for several years, into my teenage years, once I got my driver permit and on into the university years living locally, on Thanksgiving Day, mom would prepare a meal for all of the family, 15, 20 people. Grandmother and mother came. That was her special day to mourn his loss. And I was given the responsibility as the grandson to take the meal that had been covered in rental wrap and take it up to grandmother's house and leave it uh, on her kitchen table. And I would hear her, I'd hear her sobbing in her room. So that's always impacted on me. I think Virginians can be and, and are very proud of the Virginia War Memorial when they come here. It's much more than just a beautiful spot overlooking downtown Richmond and the James River. Um, it's a place that has, over the years, uh, put forth a very significant effort to try and build something uh, unseen in other parts of the country. And that is a true, dedicated living memorial to those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice for us. And we've done so with education programming, with programming that's focused on veterans, and a real outreach effort to the community, not only to every corner uh, of the Commonwealth, but even beyond the state, to try and make sure that we all understand why it's so important to honor our veterans and those that have made the ultimate sacrifice. And welcome back to our program. At this time, Secretary Jabs will place the Commonwealth's memorial wreath in the Shrine of Memory. Assisting her today is Mr. Mike Harris, a Gold Star family member and cousin of PFC Richard Harris, whose name was added to the Shrine this year. Please, Secretary Jabs, Mr. Harris. Each year on Memorial Day, we take a moment to honor those Virginians whose names were added to the Shrine of Memory in the past year. As often is the case, the names are not the most recent losses to a war, but identities that were brought to our attention by family or friends during the year, and that we were able to verify and finally add to the rightful place of remembrance. These names are here now permanently. They will endure. Long after we are gone, these names will remain. The memorial bell from the USS Virginia will be rung on the announcement of each of the names. Richard J. Harris, killed in action in Korea, from Henrico. Ben Maxwell, killed in the bombing of the U.S. Embassy in Beirut, 1983, from Appomattox. Donald C. May, Jr., killed in action in Iraq 
from Richmond. Umayun Khan, killed in action in Iraq, from Bristow. Secretary Jabs and Mr. Harris may return to the seats. At this time, please stand for the playing of taps, followed by a moment of silence to honor all that have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. Thank you. On Memorial Day of 1945, General Lucian Truscott delivered an address at the Rome Sicily Cemetery. In the middle of the address, General Truscott turned his back to the audience and faced the thousands of new graves holding Americans lost fighting the campaign in Italy. And he apologized to them for his role in placing them there. And he swore to honor their memory and he then delivered the words to those in attendance inscribed in the stone behind me. It is a challenge to us, all allied nations, to ensure that they do not and have not died in vain. Let's heed these words. Let's spend this Memorial Day and every day remembering those that gave up their life and freedom so that may, we may enjoy ours. Thank you again for joining us here at the Virginia War Memorial. This memorial belongs to all of us, and we all share in its mission. Before you leave today, if anything, visit the shrine, look upon these names, get to know them, and never forget. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of Memorial Day. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this Memorial Day program from the Virginia War Memorial in Richmond. We close today with a tribute to all of the men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our great nation by visiting the Virginia veteran ceremonies all across this great Commonwealth. We will never forget. Thanks for joining us.
Thank you for watching the Commonwealth's Memorial Day Ceremony, live from the Virginia War Memorial. For additional information about the Virginia War Memorial and the Virginia Department of Veterans Services, please visit dvs.virginia.gov.